Good evening and welcome to Richard French Live. Thank you very much for joining us tonight. This evening, we bring you a one hour special RFL investigation titled Ride at Your Own Risk. It is a series that we've been working on for months now and it focuses on Rye Playland. That's the only county owned amusement park in the entire United States. Playland has been around for 80 years and has been designated an historic landmark. But as recent history shows, it has also been the scene of far too many tragedies. Three people lost their lives at Playland over just a three year period between 2004 and 2007. It's a track record that sent RNN looking for some answers. So tonight, we are going to shine a spotlight on safety at Playland. Now, this evening, we begin with a background on the history of a park, a park that has seen its better days. Then we will get into some of the deadly details. We will take a look at the people who lost their lives there, including the heartbreaking story of one mother whose son died senselessly on a ride. Then it's on to the price tag and to the politics and why some suggest a local government should not be in the amusement park business. Then we go to take a look at the Mind Scrambler. That is a ride where two people lost their lives. Thankfully, it's not a playland anymore, but amazingly, after months of searching, no one could tell us where this ride is, including the owner of the ride, the park, and even officials at the State Labor Department. And finally, we're going to give Westchester County a chance themselves. We're going to let them tell their side of the story. County Executive Andy Spano, he did screen a part of the program, but then he turned down our request to be on the show tonight. But we did talk to the director of the parks and the director of Playland, and you'll hear what they think about their track record and what they've done to improve safety at the park. Now we begin tonight with a look at the history of the park, and for that, let's bring in Carolyn Rowe. Carolyn? Rich, for decades, people have been coming to Rye Playland for the rides and the entertainment. It's been known as an innovative amusement park, not just to those in Westchester, but around the region and beyond. It has even played a central role in several big screen movies. Along the shores of the Long Island Sound, tucked in the small city of Rye, sits a site with great history. One of its thing, great historic importance is that it was the first um, entirely planned amusement park. It's considered the grandfather of theme parks and the grandfather of Disneyland. You may recognize Rye Playland from this 1988 movie Big. I tried to tell you. I didn't. Listen. Dedicated a National Historic Landmark in 1987 and known for being the only county-owned amusement park in the country, Playland has been a place for laughter and summer fun for more than eight decades. The history, I think, makes it much more interesting. When you, when you realize that this was an attraction that was built for people 80 years ago um, to enjoy and you're still enjoying it, it enhances your enjoyment of it. It, does, it, make, it gives another dimension for your enjoyment of the amusement park. The Raw Historical Society says before Playland opened in 1928, there were hotels, amusements, and rides in that area, but it had more of a Coney Island feel than some local residents would have liked. According to an early report of the Westchester County Park Commission, the area evolved rapidly as the population increased until in the late 1800s, fancy resorts were already giving way to bawdy hotels and rowdy amusement areas and attracting unsavory crowds. But by the 1920s, it had become quite honky-tonk. Um, and it was frequented by people who perpetrated um, petty crimes uh, and it was generally considered not a plus. It was very, very crowded and very well used, but I think over time people got, had people who lived in Rye and around here had the feeling that it was time for it to go because it had become more of a nuisance. If you review local newspapers from the, t from the era, you always hear the editor or letters or people writing in to complain about the noise and the commotion over in that part of Rye. They, they, it was Rye Beach. In the mid-1920s, Westchester County purchased the land and hired Frank Darling, a nationally known amusement park expert, to plan the park. Construction started after Labor Day in 1927 and by spring of 1928, the park was open for business. Seven of the original rides are still there today. 
the carousel was there and is, is significant in its own respect. Um, the um, derby was there and, and the whip was there. The park became a popular destination, known for its star power, innovative music tower and architecture. It was designed so that the rides um, visually integrated with one another so that it, there, wasn't, it, there wasn't this jarring sensation every time you looked to the next ride. It was all very visually integrated. Physically, the park hasn't changed much over the years, but you can't say the same for the atmosphere. They had, for instance, Kitty Land had uniformed nurses to take care of the children. You could leave your children at Kitty Land while you went off to dine at one of the waiter served restaurants, which is very different from what there is now, um, or while you went to the adult rides or went to the beach. And while Playland has been a spot for family fun, in recent years it has also been the scene of many tragedies. Over a three-year period between 2004 and 2007, three people died on rides at Playland. According to a safety expert in a recent court deposition, that is one of the worst fatality rates of the more than 300 amusement parks throughout the country. In fact, the deposition goes on to say that Playland has accounted for a staggering 30 percent of all amusement park deaths nationally over a five-year period. 21-year-old Gabriella Garin was the most recent victim. A young mother was actually a ride operator. She was killed on the Mind Scrambler in 2007. She was a good person, and I think what happened was a really tragic accident. She was a great mom, too. Um, she was an honorable student. Um, she was friendly, and it's really sad that this happened. Although Westchester County runs the park, it doesn't actually own all of the rides that operate there. Garin worked for SNL Amusements, which owned the Mind Scrambler. But Garin's was not the first life loss on that spinning ride. Seven year old Stephanie Dayudan was thrown from that same ride and killed back in 2004. The Mind Scrambler never reopened after the 2007 death, but the ye old mill, where another child's life was cut short is still operating at the park today. Seven-year-old John Kelly Casera of Norwalk, Connecticut was killed after boarding the Yield Mill ride. On that ride, boats moved gently in the dark through scenes populated by gnomes and trolls. The boy apparently got scared, got out of the boat and ended up trapped under the boats, dead from a blunt head injury. Now, recently, the parents of that boy, John Kelly Casera, reached a $1.25 million settlement in a negligent lawsuit with Westchester County. Rich? Thank you very much, Carolyn. Now, we're going to see Carolyn in a few minutes, but coming up next, we're going to have the emotional interview with the mother of the little boy who died at Playland and the shocking details that we uncovered surrounding his death, a death many say could have been avoided. We're going to have much more when our RFL special investigation, Ride at Your Own Risk, comes right back.